Hi, I'm Dr. Ranjit, consultant endocrine surgeon at Silverline Hospital, Kochi. Today, I'm going to give you a short description of some of the common thyroid disorders which we come in our daily practice and those the surgical management of this these disorders whenever required. So, when do we do surgery for the thyroid disorders? That is what my concern is and uh, these many people come to us with just swellings of the neck. So, do we need to do surgery for all those swellings? My answer will be no, but because if you start doing surgeries for all these cases, you will be ending with, uh, you, there will be no time for a surgeon to complete his work in the prescribed time. So, uh, there are certain conditions in which we do surgery for these, uh, these tumors or rather swellings of the uh, thyroid. Common thyroid disorders which we see in our clinical practice include hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, nodular goiters and cancers. The surgeries which are done commonly for these disorders include total thyroidectomies which is a complete removal of thyroid gland and hemithyroidectomy which is the minimum procedure which should be done in a thyroid gland. And uh, what we do is an open procedure for most of the uh, cases because that is a safe, it's actually uh, limited to one particular area that's only in the neck and it is a very safe procedure for the patient. The complication rates of this procedure when done in a safe, in a trained hand is much, much less compared to other procedures. So, the only thing which you have to ensure is your surgeon is adequately, adequately trained and he has got enough exposure to thyroid surgeries. Not all these, nor, uh, all these conditions require surgery and very few of them require, do require a surgical intervention. The, so, how do we choose these patients for surgery? That is based on the clinical suspicion, radiological suspicion and the cytology findings which we get and we put all together to take a decision regarding the surgery for the patient. Uh, for example, clinical, uh, clinical suspicion, if you have a patient who has got a hard nodule which is almost fixed, which is not moving sideways or uh, associated with uh, other swellings like lymph nodes, these are the patients who are sus clinically suspicious. I am just giving an example and some of them are, uh, they may be they're more prone for ca cancers and things like that. So, we do subject these patients for surgery and radiological suspicion if you have a, a ultrasound finding of micronodularity, um, of microcalcification, irregular nodule and uh, associated with lymph nodes having cystic spaces, microcalcifications, all these are radiological sus radiologically suspicious nodules which has to be operated in spite of whatever you get in cytology or a clinical finding. And cytological ones, the, if you have micro follicles, the, we have category, we do have category, categories for these uh, cytological uh, uh, findings and we, it varies from purely benign goiters right to the malignant ones. So, we operate on those ones which we get uh, a ma pure, definitely malignant, suspicious of malignancy or that of an indeterminate nodule that is like follicular neoplasm or a Hartle cell neoplasm. In the post-operative period, we usually keep the patient uh, n uh, without uh, taking anything that is niloral for uh, around 6 hours, after which we ask them to take feeds, uh, initially tea, coffee or juices, fruit juices and things like that. And by the next day morning, they are on, on the normal diet. Uh, sometimes what happens is when the goiter is big, we do keep a small drain which is a tube uh, there into the place where the thyroid was occupied to prevent uh, collection formation, uh, collection of fluid, uh, to prevent the collection of fluid in that area. So, and that is usually removed on the next day or next to next day and uh, the patient is ready to go home. And once they go home, they can be as normal as before and they don't have to do any special precautions or any t specific rest for the same procedure. And another thing you have to know is that most of the time nowadays we are doing something called total thyroidectomy that is uh, a complete removal of the thyroid gland. We never, we, all, all over the world, in the, most of the standard centers, they have stopped doing something, this uh, partial thyroidectomy, subtotal thyroidectomy and all this, keeping a portion of the thyroid gland. Because as I told you, there is uh, a risk of cancer in that one, that is uh, around 10 to 15 percent. Even if all the tests are negative, the final biopsy can show 10 to 15 percent of cancer in that. And second thing is, 
uh, you can have a recurrence of the nodules in the remnant what is whatever you have left behind you can have a recurrence of uh, the tumor and third thing you can in spite of whatever you do you whatever remnant you remove you in almost 60 percent of cases you have to still take thyroxine so the very purpose of keeping that piece there is defeated if you start taking thyroxine so uh, most of the cases we do thyroidectomy, total thyroidectomy in, uh, for our patients and these patients require lifelong thyroxine therapy which is of no problem at all. Taking thyroxine is quite safe and it is effective and it is a day, once a day dosing and uh, it can be easily monitored and if the uh, thyroxine levels are kept in normal ranges there is no issue of any complication or any reaction it's a drug which can be used safely because that is something which is produced in the body so there is no problem in taking thyroxine and only thing is that it has to be taken lifelong and uh, the monitoring has to be done uh, usually uh, into one two to three months till the uh, levels are uh, stabilized and after that once in six months or once in a year. So that is what is required. One common question which my patients ask me is, do I have to do a endoscopic procedure for the thyroid nodule? My answer, if personally, if I have to undergo a surgery, I'll say no, because there are few reasons for that. One, it is not a minimally invasive procedure. It's, it's actually a maximally invasive procedure. You are just transposing the scar from the neck to the axilla that's all and second thing is like you are using a thermal device near the recurrent laryngeal nerve which gives you the voice and parathyroid glands which controls your calcium in normal cases we never ever use a thermal device anywhere near these structures because they are ha all having very delicate blood supply and your par parathyroids can get ablated even with the slightest thermal uh, injury we don't do that usually so uh, uh, in my case if if i were to operate and uh, i were to get operated by a surgeon i would definitely prefer an open procedure because the only thing is it gives a fine scar which is usually blunts with the fold of the neck to avoid this scar you have to go in for a axillary procedure which is more painful it takes more time for recovery and uh, as i told you more chance of complications which no surgeon will tell you directly on your face.